to come in. Thank you. Yay, here we are. Happy here we are. Monday. Yay. Hi, hi. <laughs> I think it's important to, to um, appreciate mothers every day, but at least at least a couple of days and Mother's Day. So, and I don't mean just our moms or their moms, but I mean dog moms and grandmoms and <laughs> aunts that are like moms and god yes. mothers, godmothers rather, not godmothers. <laughs> Even plant moms. That's it. Yes. Cat moms and bird moms. <laughs> Yes. I follow a couple people on, on Instagram now that have tortoises. Oh, they do? So, yeah, so there's even tortoise moms out there. Of course. <laughs> that every mom needs to be appreciated. Hi, Book Bewitched. Hi, Sharon Sy. Thanks for coming by. Who Did I miss anybody? Not yet. Okay. Nah, we're still early. Plus, there's a big thing going on on uh, Freebird tonight with, the, uh, yeah. with Linda G. She's going to come by later on. I'm getting some feedback. I don't know who it's from. Yeah. Um, Is that me? I don't know. I'm eh. not sure. We're well, rolling with it. If it gets bad again, I'll get my headset out. Yeah, that's okay. If it gets real bad, it's only because if we end up with 10 more, you know, I have up to 10 people I can put on here. But um, anyway, so I thought that I would start today by some um, talking about a couple of strange and interesting mom things. Hi, Marvita. It's good to see you. Um, so first of all, in um, the oldest woman that's ever conceived a baby um, um, it was verified in 2017 that in 1997, she was 59 years old and she did not use in vitro fertilization. That was a, you know, so she was, she conceived naturally. I can't even imagine being 59 and being pregnant. Oh my God. You know, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask about that. I can't imagine being <laughs> pregnant at all. So that was, well, it, that was, that was not a particular path my life took. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Actually. Well, that's all right. I, I made it up with it with all the fire babies. Got my executive <laughs> producer hanging out under the laptop here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All those those little babies. The heaviest baby was born the year that I was, and it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> and it was born at 22 pounds, 8 ounces. And I feel oh, so dear sorry Lord. for the mother. I know, the poor mother. That would have been in 1955, so that baby is now almost 66. Um, the lightest baby was born in 20 or that survived was um, half a pound. So, Good, yeah, I know. And they and that was in only in 2018. But you know that they probably had, um, you know, the, the things that they needed to keep that baby alive. So, you know, that that would be interesting. The most prolific family uh, comes from Russia in the 18th century. One man had two wives and 87 children. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, Genghis Wait, 87 it? just between the two wives? Yeah. And, and had. Oh, God. They, yeah, he had. They had um, like 16 twins, seven groups of triplets, four sets of quads, and the rest all regular birth. Okay. Uh, well, that yes. makes a little well, well it does, but multiple. No <laughs> they, they, they said that most women could probably have, if they probably were pregnant most of their life, I know those poor, I can't even imagine, could have 27 children. If you had kept having them, you could have, I know. My grandmother had 13 and lost four and died during her, one of her pregnancies. And uh, so my mother didn't even have her as a mother. She died when my mother was five. And I can't imagine just even having that many, um, you know, and then you have the, what the Duggar family with 19 oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. We thought that was a lot, but 87 kids. Oh my God. Um, let's see. There was another one. Oh, and you re thinking about did that. you, hear, <laughs> did you hear about the Molly lady that just had nine kids? Just like oh no, I missed that one. Yeah, she um actually went in. She went in to have a X-ray or or an ultrasound, and they saw seven heartbeats, 
And so they t flew her to Morocco. And when she gave birth, she actually, they were two hidden and she gave birth to nine. <laughs> castration. Oh, no. Castration by dull knife. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Yeah. My but, goodness. You know, I know. I know. Um, I did. Yeah, I'm going to be right back. I can go check on the Chihuahua. Okay. I don't know what the youngest child would have been, but I imagine that there or, or the youngest person to have a baby. But I think I remember reading a number of years ago that there were nine. So uh, uh, she was nine. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, my goodness. Terrible. I know. Wow. So that makes our regular um, amount of children that we have, no matter how many children we have, very normal. <laughs> well, if there's anything normal about children. <laughs> well, that's true. Now, how many children do you have, Kim? I have two. Both my children are adopted. Okay. And, that's awesome. Uh -huh. I, was, I was older, but I wasn't that old. I wasn't 59. I was uh, 39 and 42 when uh -huh. mine were born. <laughs> well, my mother had me at when she was 35. So uh -huh. yeah. Old, older parents are, are great. You know? my, my mother was older as well. I was the firstborn and she was 31 uh -huh. uh, at that time. So by the time my sister came along uh, mm -hmm. seven years later. Yeah. Oh, so how yeah. old are they now, Kim? Are they, are they out of the house? Well, I are have a son who's 19 who's still okay. with me. Okay. And my daughter's 22. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. I've got uh, two children myself. I have a son and a daughter. My daughter will be 44. Uh -huh. And my son is going to be 30. No, he is 36. He's 36. So, uh -huh. yeah. That was enough for me. <laughs> yes. I look forward to when my kids are a little older. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we really enjoy each other now, for sure. And, you know, I'm not too old, but I can still do things with them. So that's <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have kids. No kids. They don't want uh, them either. Uh huh. No kids. No. Uh huh. So. Well, <laughs> yeah. I sometimes oh. I look, look to an elephant as a mom for me. Sometimes you know, just as that just is a good mom figure. Look at those mom. How elephants are just amazing moms for their babies. Well, just the matriarchal system that they operate in is is fascinating as well. Like, yes. Right yeah they really do they, now book bewitch said that she had an 11 pound 12 ounce baby um my son was a month early and he was eight pounds seven no he was more than that he was 10 pounds so i don't know what he weighed like full term but oh i'm sorry <laughs> But you know, it's like I said to my dad, you take me home, I've decided I don't want to do this anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's I know. The years for sure. Absolutely. So any stories from either one of you? Any mothers that you uh want to talk about? It doesn't have to be your own. Mm -hmm. My favorite right now at this point in time is my fairy godmother. Um, I love that's that. That's what I call okay. her. She, uh, yeah, she, we used to work together, and uh, we bonded over the cats, too, of which I lived with me. Uh, they used to live outside the office where we were. And um, so I decided when, when she was retiring and I was going to be moving to a different location, we decided that it was time to to bring them in. And so she she's been with me ever since but helping with them and helping me through my whole issues and she's just become a godsend for sure that's great that's great i'm still mm -hmm. getting the feedback I don't know yeah, who it, is. it might be me that. i'll try to oh i don't want you to mute yourself though <laughs> well when i'm so, not i'll just take turns unmuting okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, what are you talking about? You can no longer understand what. I'd like to know what. Yeah. So um, I've had several. Uh, oh, very bad garbling. Okay. Okay. So Renee's going to see what she can do about that. That's yeah, awesome. I'm going to put my headset on and see see if that helps us at all. Okay. That sounds fine. Yeah. 
Um, so I think that's great that you have been able to find, they call them um, mothers or, or people that, um, that are like a mother. And sometimes you have even a tighter bond with that person than you might have with your own mother or with, you know, people in your own family, because you they're like a family of choice. So, oh, that's a good book. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I like that. Oh. It's Kim. It's Kim. Oh, is it yeah. Kim? <laughs> okay, I can get headphones, too. Okay, yeah. take your time. Take your time. Um, so is she a lot older than you, Renee? Does she have a family your age or is this just somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. My fairy godmother. Yeah. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. she's, um, she's about 15 years older than I am probably. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, we, we met and bonded over the cats and we worked together and, and, uh, and like I said, when that was my, that was my going away, uh, retirement present for her was that I, I said that I was going to take the cats in. Uh -huh. And awesome. uh, so she's been there to help, like I said, uh, all along with that. And and I found over the over my life that uh, even though I don't probably ever really have had the best relationship with my, my uh, biological mother, that, that those maternal figures have come into my um into my life when I needed them. Um, uh -huh. I understood that, that was happening at the time or not. Uh, you know, looking back on it, I get it now. Uh, so, right. but, yeah, I know my fairy godmother, the aunts were like that for me when I lived with, uh, with those three ladies. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they just sort of took me in and adopted me for a while. So, so I've always had, I've always managed to find those maternal figures when I needed them or, or they That's should true. appear when I needed them. They show up when you need them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had several in my life. I lost my mother um, a long time ago, really. This is a picture. If I don't know if you can even see it. That's my mother. I lost my mother um, a long time ago, really. This and um, she was, uh, it was, that was a year before she died. And she uh, died at 68 years old. And I'm 66, so, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know. I haven't had her now longer than I had her. But at the same time, I think that um, there's a lot of other women or men that have lost their mothers or their fathers earlier than I was 33. So um, it's just, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. But um, she had a lot, of, a lot of health issues, so, but... So Kim, tell us about your mom, if you or a mom figure for you. Can't hear you. Oh. Hold on. Okay, wait. Sorry, guys. I got it. There no, I got it. it. There you go. Are you, are you can hear me I now. Can, but I'm not it. using. I'm not plugged in. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> but you're doing the talking, so you go right ahead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, well, let's see. My, you know, <clears throat> my mother was, had some illness when I was young. And, yeah. so, you know, she died okay. when, I when I was, when I was rather young, like when I was 12. Suffering happening. Oh, yes. For me? I think it's for it's me. Big, okay. Join the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't, this must not have a microphone on it. This is just oh, a I head see. thing. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so my, so when my mom was sick, uh, I would go to my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so both my grandparents were, were my, like my mom, you know, my grandparents mm -hmm. were my mom and dad, a second mom and dad to me. And sure. so, I, and I know, you know, of course they're all in spirit now and they are around me a lot. You know, I actually have a better relationship with my mom now than I did when she was alive. I mean, because I was so young too, you know, I was less than 12. So, um, and I think I told you this too, Allie, that, you know, I know that she works with me, you know, 
in, in, in my work. And so that's really wonderful. And, um, yeah. you know, I just know she's a big light in my life, even though I think she became closer because she couldn't be here when I was growing up. Yes. Absolutely. So she kind of has made up for it. She's being your guardian angel now. Yeah. Yes. She's right with you all the time. Did you know if she had any um, gifts like you do? Uh, well, she was an astrologer and numerologist. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. I'd say it passes down from mother to daughter. Uh huh. Well, I know my grandmother also. Her mother was very psychic. Ah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not. I think way more than me. I mean, uh, wow. She just. I mean, she was doing channeling and tarot and all that. You know, it was not even in style, of course. Sure. sure. <laughs> it probably was. Ooh, you know. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. that's weird. Or yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. My mother read Ruth Montgomery books and, you know, she talked a lot about stuff on the other side. And, yes. Yeah. And, but she knew when my brother had several accidents in Vietnam, when he was uh, a soldier, over there, mm -hmm. she would wake right up out of bed sleep. Oh. And so she had the gift. Yeah. Yeah. But we all, I actually know, I think we all have the gift. I think so. It's we just all do. Getting at having access to it that yes. is difficult for some of just us. Just working it. Yeah, it's just working yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Renee, are you okay? Can you hear us okay? I don't know. Oh, is, is, is her, a little... you look like you're freezing up, Renee. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, a, I think I might be buffering. I'm gonna I'm gonna back out and come back in and see if that helps. <laughs> Okay, Renee. Mercury isn't even in retrograde. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have always been so thankful for my grandparents, though, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, on both sides, too. Sure. Sure. Uh -huh. I didn't have that. They were all gone before I was born. So, oh. Yeah. Darn. Mm -hmm. But I, I know. had a mom that was very special. She was like a grandmother to me. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay. At least you I'd had like that. to know where everybody else is. My goodness, I thought that we were going to have five or six people here, and I don't see anybody. So we'll just hope that they. Well, I do get to see because you're very, very punctual. That I'm assuming that the yeah, educator in you, because <laughs> everybody else is like, "Where am I? We'll be there in a minute." <laughs> oh, okay. I'm always. My problem so, is I'm always a ahead time, of time. But, 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 yeah, yeah. No, we, I think some of our friends are more the fashionably late type. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, my first husband was late to our, our wedding, so I should have known right there that that wasn't probably a very good relationship. Oh, wow. And was he always late after that, too? Oh, always. Yeah, yeah always late. And, um, you know, I only was with him for like three years because he never grew up really it was one of those things but it was a good lesson you know so and i got my daughter from that marriage so, you know uh -huh. Uh -huh. lovely nice yeah oh so, we got, got a newbie in the room hey uh wow. yes welcome to our broadcast Janeski. she's got a dog in her picture oh it's cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't, I can't see that little. <laughs> it is. It's cute. Um, so I would like to know from some of you um, what you would like to say about your mothers or your mother or who as a mother or um, let me see, you as a mother or uh, stories that um, – information or anybody you would like to pay a tribute to uh go ahead and write it in if you're a mother we want to pay a tribute to you as well so um just write it all down oh she's in your after sylvia brown oh my goodness that's so funny it is yeah oh that's cute she's really cute that's nice <laughs> Well, I um, I have a poem I could share. I, I just pulled up those crazy, crazy things, and then it isn't my poem, but it was my mother's favorite poem. Nice. Yeah. I'll pass it along here. Um, it's not too long. I don't like to 
be too long. All right. It's called Somebody's Mother by a Mary Brine. The woman was old and ragged and gray and bent with the chill of the winter's day. The street was wet with the recent snow and the woman's feet were aged and slow. She stood at the crossing and waited long, alone, uncared for, amid the throng of human beings who passed her by, nor heeded the glance of her anxious eye. Down the street with laughter and shout, glad in the freedom of school let out, came the boys like a flock of sheep, hailing the snow piled white and deep. Past the old woman, so old and gray, hastened the children on their way, nor offering a helping hand to her, so meek, so timid, afraid to stir, lest the carriage wheels of the horse's feet should crowd her down in the slippery street. At last came one of the merry troop, the gayest laddie of all the group. He paused beside her and whispered low, I'll help you cross if you wish to go. Her aged hand on his strong young arm, he placed and so without hurt or harm, he guided the trembling feet along, proud that his own were firm and strong. Then back again to his friends he went, his young heart happy and well content. She's somebody's mother, boys, you know, for she's aged and poor and slow. And I hope some fellow will lend a hand to help my mother, you understand. If ever she's poor and old and gray, when her own dear boy is far away. And somebody's mother bowed her head low in her home that night. And the prayer she said was, God be kind to the noble boy who is somebody's son, their pride and joy. So, That's yeah. beautiful. It is a nice, it's a nice house. Beautiful, it is. And who wrote that, I'm sorry? Her name is uh, Mary Dow Brine, and she actually would have been born in 1916 to 1913. So she, this is an, obviously if there if there's a, um, a a carriage and things like that, we don't see those very often. But um, it just reminds me so much of you know somebody standing on a on a corner and afraid to go across the street because they have a cane or they have something and and nobody's stopping for them you know and um you know we should treat all people we should treat all people that the nice way um okay book oh oh my goodness okay. yes i see book bewitched yeah yeah it makes sense i think that's what people do they study social work and things like that Yes. For himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so I'm guessing you were the only child. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of people who have a, a focus on psychology or social work have had some kind of trauma. Yes. My daughter, daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well. Mm. Have you felt her around you? I bet she's around you like Kim's mom is. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. All, all those special times, you know? So, uh huh. Wow. Yes, exactly. That's a really yeah. hard time to lose a, a mom when you're just turning into a teenager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes you grow up fast in a certain way, but then you miss, you know, I think, I think you kind of never really go through all the stages or something. Uh -huh. I don't really know how that works. Right. I think I've avoided learning how that works. <laughs> Are you an only child, Kim? I know. I have two younger oh. sisters. Oh, oh, so you had to take care of things. Yeah, you had to be the mother, right? I mean, yeah, it didn't work out very good. No, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked out good for me either. Yeah. Uh huh. No, I'm afraid to ask if she's there. Oh, really? Yeah. Afraid because? I mean, yeah. Yeah, well, book. There's no reason to be right. I'm surprised to hear that from, from book. Yeah, but you know, if that's how she feels. Then you have to honor that. So it's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. book and I are yeah. friends, so that like so that just I know. surprises no, me. No, no, I know that. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand I that. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I, yeah, I mean, feel I that too. Yeah, <laughs> we keep doing the, 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 the dance. Yeah, because I mean, like, that's 
the same way. Well, similar with my with my dad because uh, he died when I was sixteen. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I, I it, it's been. I mean, it took decades before I was able to really put all that together, reconcile it, and and uh, and now he's. I like him. He's, he, I feel closer to him now than I ever have before, even when he was alive. And um, uh-huh. and I think our parents, our mothers, I don't know. They just, I know my mother just didn't know how to react to things. You know, she just, it's like she didn't quite. There's no book. That like she didn't quite know what she was getting into. And I don't know if that's a, just a a parental thing <laughs> like yeah you want kids but you're not quite sure what you're jumping into or if it was more her own particular traumas from her childhood so very possible but, but could have yeah played in. yeah but, all i know yeah. is she told she one of her favorite stories to tell about me was that she because i'm the oldest she swore uh-huh. up and down she was never going to be the parent that said because i'm the mom and i said so Oh, okay. That is until I learned to say, why? <laughs> <laughs> so. Hello, Melinda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. My mother, you could not talk back to her. You, there was no way. She, um, she. So I had a lot of anger that I had to push down that she would not oh, allow yeah. me to, to vent. And, and, you know, I understand she didn't want a sassy daughter. And I was, but I could never get upset. So... That was mm-hmm. very difficult. That was very difficult for me. And because of that, um, it made it hard for me to be a mother because I had all that anger and I didn't have anywhere to put it. And so, I don't know, I just, I don't, I never felt like um, motherhood was my cup of tea, even though I had kids, but it was like you had kids. People had kids in that time period. Everybody had kids. You just didn't even ask that question. You just had kids, you know. So, um, and I love my kids. I really do. But I know that I could have been so much better. So, I, I just. Well, I think that's part of why I didn't go down that path was because by the time I figured out what it was, I just could not, after what I'd been through, I just could not put a child through not knowing what I had available to give that child. You know, and and by the time I figured out what I had in me and that I I had the potential to be a good parent, the the stars just did not align for that for me. So now it happens. But that's okay because you know, yeah. yeah, My goal at this point is, uh, you know, to be a guide for for other people down the road. Um, You know, I can't wait till the pandemic gets passed and you know Jen and I can go live wherever we want to live and we've already talked about it you know we want to be in a, a place where we can have access to um like lgbt community and, uh, and you know sort of have an open oh, yeah. house for yeah. for those teenagers that don't you know somewhere to go like so i didn't have yeah. Yeah. yeah somewhere there where somebody it was just safe loving environment somebody's there to encourage you you know that that's the kind of place i want to be able to provide uh and perhaps be somebody's maternal figure down the road yeah there you go yeah it doesn't have to be biological obviously what did you want to say kim i know you were trying to oh no i was uh, I don't know. No, I was waving to my son here just like this. <laughs> he was oh, watching. Okay. Me. <laughs> my son was walking by, asking where the weights are. You know, he's 19, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> 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 uh, no, and I just know that it's not. Yeah, motherhood is complicated. I mean, it's 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 emotional. I always get emotional on Mother's Day. I don't know because. A lot of reasons. It's just up and down for me. Um, yeah, it's a very touchy day. Touchy, I'll say. Is that the right word? Touchy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm so out of it lately. But I've, 
since I don't have contact with my family of origin, the, 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 the holidays like this usually zip by and I don't even notice them. Because it, it just, it, it, it comes and goes and it, it I don't know, it's, it's almost like Christmas that way too. It's just, there's not that, especially the last few years, there's just not that uh, family to, to, ability to be around people and be in a familial environment so, <laughs> so yeah. yeah no it's, yeah i get it I yeah yeah there's there are those moments in those days so. yeah definitely. definitely i was going to say also i went back to um book bewitched um how she's worried about her mom trying to contact her and then she hasn't i mean the probably i mean i think all mothers are wanting to be you know in the spirit world they want their their children to know they're there and so i'm sure that she has been trying to contact book bewitched i mean i think it's i've never seen this that they haven't you know okay. you know okay. um that in my experience um with the spirit world so but it's but um our point maybe we are afraid that um well how are we going to react or, or what's what is the feeling or you know is there still anger or a lot of grief and so maybe we don't want to deal with that sure yep that mm -hmm. shadow part that's hard mm -hmm. to deal with um i've never re i wonder if i've always thought my mother is always already reincarnated or something because i've never had her come through she was um of course she's been dead 33 years and somebody said she's work, you know, somebody said once that she was working on her life or working on something. And I remember, um, I just never have heard from her. You know, I personally haven't. Now I know she's around, but I sort of think of her as being around with my dad at the same time, because I'll hear Glenn Miller music and that's them. You know, then I know they're around me because that was their favorite. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would recognize her if she came through alone myself. So I'm I, understand, yeah. I understand that too. I mean, like my grandmother's the same way mm -hmm. that maybe she's come through once in, uh -huh. you know, 20, 30 years. Uh -huh. um, but I know her husband, my grandfather always comes in, but it's like, he's the better communicator. So that's why he's the one that comes uh -huh. in. Okay. You see, but I know she's not, I know she's right there. I mean, I know we're, cause we're like this too. So uh -huh. I know she's there. It's just that it's, um, maybe she doesn't need to be, you know, she's kind of loud. She's kind of quiet on earth too. Uh huh. It's so possible. it's hard, a little harder for yeah. her to be heard. Uh huh. Yeah. For your so, mom. Yeah. Do you remember a lot about your mother? Well, some, you know, some, okay. not, not really, maybe that much but i mean yes um but also you know my way of believing with reincarnation is that um you know we have a big oversoul right. so your mom my mom they're always going to be that spirit and that oversoul. right and so even if they have reincarnations which i'm sure they have it's going to be a different body i mean okay you know what i mean a different soul part of the soul or yeah. something or yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. that's yeah. what i think yeah a different tentacle from the soul. Right. So your mom will always be your mom in that way, the way you knew her. The way you knew her, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what they say. Oh, it says that some of them also pick ages like they want to be 35 or, you right. know. Right. I, and um, I, I know I would be able to recognize her if I could see her. But the yeah. um, yeah. book says that everyone else dances around, but no, but uh, she doesn't come through. So that's, um, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't, uh, it's hard to say. She might be afraid to come through. She might be kind of sorry or something that she left she, too early. So, yeah, she left too early. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah, she just did, has to say she's sorry first or something. There you go. That's how it was when I first met my mom in spirit. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, when I was studying mediumship, when I first started studying, then she came in as very quiet and barely able to, nobody could hardly even pick up her energy. And she was okay. always like, sorry, like this and everything. And then uh -huh. as soon as we started communicating, she just got bigger and bigger. Uh -huh. and, and now she just is, so she comes through now easily. Uh-huh. I mean, I know she's still on the quiet side, but she's changed. She's gotten yeah. bigger. 
Yeah, you've accepted her energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, there's yeah. been a, a healing. Sure. And so sure. now she's grown and now she comes in more. That's awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I love her. Yeah, go ahead, Renee. Kim, do you think that that is your mother's uh, personality and traits? Or do you think that it was that your view and your window of her grew? Like I think you're, you allowed her to come in more. You think both? Oh, I think it's both. But, but her personality and traits definitely, I mean, because she came in very apologetic. Oh. Um, many times actually before she started like getting, you know, expanded. Yeah. But even so, even when I was first learning that she was coming in, it was only took a few weeks and then she was getting expanded. And then she went through a period of still being quiet and people having a hard time getting her, but I could feel her more. And now she's a very good communicator Wow! from the spirit world. <laughs> That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I, I know. That. Honestly, it's just, I love talking to my family and the spirit. I mean, I, cause I probably do, do it every week. You know, I have, sure. I have, I work with mediums and spirit circle. And, and so we, we are, are you know, I, I hear from the family all the time. Wow. <laughs> probably more than you were here. That's probably true. <laughs> That's really yeah. cool. Uh -huh. So, well, my mother was always upset because um, my father did genealogy for his side of the family, but not her side of the family. And we didn't know very much about her side of the family because they moved over here from Wales in 1913. And she was born here. Some of her brothers and sisters were born there. And so I didn't know. And there's no there's like one picture. There's we didn't really know anything. So about three years ago, I got a um, I went on 23 and me and I found a first cousin and I she lives in England and she's I think she's uh, 70 or 72 years old. And her grandmother was. No, her great grandmother was my grandmother's sister. I know it's weird because there's so many age differences. But anyway, we are first cousins. And so I thought that was fabulous. And I just was so excited. Well, not only that, but on my father, my grandfather's side, somebody died over there and they had nobody that would um, inherit anything. So they've been doing a, an exhaustive search over here and they have found 36 relatives that will eventually, they can't find them all, will eventually get a small inheritance. But for me, it isn't the money. It's like, wow, all this world just opened up. And I thought my mother would be so happy about that, you know, that she would say, oh, it's finally about my family. <laughs> so, yeah, but I thought it was cool. That's nice. I'm, that makes me want to do that. 23 and me. I haven't done that yet. Oh, you haven't? Uh -uh. It's great. One of the funniest things that has happened to me was that um, I had a student in um, a class that I used to teach. And he, he was just a nice guy, but he had some trouble and he wasn't able to come to class all the time. And But I knew who he was and I worked with him and everything. And he was in his 30s and his father and mother were in the Hell's Angels. So he had very rough background. And in my 23 and me, he's he's actually a cousin of mine. And there's no way that that would ever it flip. It, it just we just couldn't believe it. Um, he's like my third cousin. Um, and he originally came from the East Coast, which is where I'm from. So, but you know, the things you find out, oh my God, it, but it's so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done the genetic part of it, but I, I during my recovery period, I, I, I decided to do the, the ancestry.com stuff. No, oh, no, no, okay. I haven't done any of oh. that. I've just done okay. the ancestry. And so I did, did some digging that way and found um, my mother's family. Um, the primary, the primary wing and I went down for, for hers. Uh, their last name is Bridgewater. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just, you know, see if I can figure out where this came from. So mm -hmm. I track it down and it goes back to uh, uh, England in, mm -hmm. 
gosh, I think I think it's all the way back to the 1500s. It went back, uh, but it turns out there was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It turns out there's a guy named Walter. He owned a no. bridge. Okay, and uh, he 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 became a lord or another. So the bridge of Walter eventually uh -huh. became Bridgewater. <laughs> so oh, it's interesting to be that. able to yeah. Yeah, yeah, how the name evolved, yeah. uh, because the same thing on my father's side, um, most of my father's uh, ancestors traced back to Prussia. Oh, and wow. the, um, yeah, so, and, and the guy, uh, there was a, oh, he's like a that. great grandfather, I think it was, who uh, uh -huh. was named after, like, the, the, I kind of get the impression that he was sort of the Alexei Navalny of the Prussian <laughs> versus the German situation. Yeah. There was there was some big hoo ha about who got you know property rights. Hi, Andrea. But um, is she? On? But yeah, so it all went back to okay. She's bouncing yeah. in and out. She can't decide. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that that I traced that back to Prussia. But when they came. Uh, to the United States in the 1800s, uh, mm -hmm. the their last name was um, oh god, it was like it started with a G, which is what uh -huh. caught my attention. I'm like G, where what? <laughs> and it was wow. it was basically it was basically the Prussian version of Gray was the name, and so somehow or another oh. that got anglicized when they came to the United States to grow. So right. go figure, whatever. But yeah, no, interesting stuff when you get to trace and yeah, back those ancestors. Andrea, you've got uh, your, is it your grandma? Hello, Andrea. Hi, <laughs> happy Mother's Day <laughs> show. <laughs> yes. Isn't it your grandma who's uh, near 100? Is that, do I remember that right? My, grandma, my grandmother's 102. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's that Canadian stock. <laughs> That's I bet awesome. Andrew's grandma's got great stories. Uh huh. Indeed, she was uh, yeah. a nurse in the war. Yeah. I Which think, war? Well, I think the first one. First war? <laughs> yeah, war? yeah, probably one the more. first one. Yeah. Well, it could be the second one because the second one, probably the second. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, second. Second. yeah. yeah my dad would, would have been a hundred and three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And she yeah. said, she, because she's always so happy, right? And uh -huh. just lets things go and doesn't worry. And she just is always happy. And I say, Grandma, how come you're always happy? And she yeah. said, what she saw, because she was a nurse, right? And she saw these men, these young men with parts of their bodies blown off or whatever. Yeah. And they were just so grateful to be alive uh -huh. that yeah. she thought, I will never have anything as bad as what they're going through. So I'm sure. I, like, so she just is always happy, right? Because wow. she knows what real bad stuff is. She saw sure. it firsthand. She lives in gratitude, it sounds <laughs> Absolutely. like. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So you're going to see her and mom for Mother's Day? Uh, yeah, going over to my parents on Sunday, and we will FaceTime Grandma, see if uh, she's up for a call. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, some days uh -huh. they're good, some days they're bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm curious lot. what her situation is. Like, is she, does she still walk? Or uh, she's still at home. Uh, uh -huh. she, she asked to stay at home. She doesn't want to go to a facility um so she's still at home she needs a walker uh mm -hmm. but still like pretty good for 102 like yeah you know <laughs> you know when the memory is really good she remembers everything crystal clear right so it, it's yeah. interesting to see someone at that age Mm -hmm. sure. So, did wow. she, were, were you able to see her a lot when you were growing up? Was she someone that yep. was around all the time? Yeah. Uh, well, they live on the East Coast, so we would see them every summer for sure, and sometimes some okay. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Or they come visit here. Sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, we've been having a great time. I was I I started out with uh, giving some um, of the. Um, information about the oldest mother and the biggest baby that was born and all that oh. stuff. 
but um, it was now we're just big. working on. It was twenty-two pounds and something. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, can you even imagine? No, thank you. <laughs> but um, so, what else would you like to share? And and this is Kim, medium Kim, and she is. Uh, yes, and she is a um, hospice nurse and an oh. and a medium and a psychic and. She, um, and one of our new yeah. website members, one of our Terra yeah. Love Community members now. Yeah. Very excited yeah. about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. have you guys yeah. talked about being a pet mom? Because not everyone has. No, has I a, think you should talk here. about that. Yeah. So, we waited. You know, being a, a pet mom is, is uh, a truly an honor when you can take care of an animal. Uh, especially one that's a rescue, but of course any any pet that you have, sure. and uh, provide them with a loving home. I mean, what a wonderful gift to these sweet animals who, you know, they can't defend themselves, let's say, or speak for themselves. And and you know, you step in and you take care of them, and they they just unconditional love. I mean, what a yep, what a wonderful thing. I know. And so you've I'm, got. Two, I'm a right cat mom. <laughs> I have <laughs> I have two cats. Uh, uh, I'm a cat person. I've often had cats, and uh, it's so rewarding. I don't have kids, but I do have cats. That's all right. That's every mom is is <laughs> a good mom. Yeah. So, and Renee has five cats, right? Yes, is that right, five Renee? cats yeah. and the very very old Chihuahua. <laughs> oh, do the cats <laughs> beat up the Chihuahua? <laughs> Oh no, they they mostly don't pay him any attention. Oh. Only Sophie, the oldest of the cats, really pays him much attention. But that's just because they've been together so long. Because when we got when uh, my ex wife and I got Tristan, um, the 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 animals we had at the time were all much older, and they bored of him quickly. <laughs> so so then came Sophie because Tristan needed a playmate. <laughs> Wow. I was just going to say, I have it. I have it. I don't know if you can see her. Wait, there she oh. is. Oh. <laughs> She's asleep. She was playing in the hose a little while ago. Um, I just was watering, you know, a golden retriever is in water. You know? The golden yeah. retriever is that you just get the hose out and it's just like, it's like throwing the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had <laughs> so she's still tired from that. <laughs> she's only a year and a half. Aww, she's cute. Very cute. I, um, Thank you. I have always had dogs so because my mother was afraid of cats. Oh. So we never had a cat. Um, but uh, she just had a, a phobia about cats and snakes. One of the, uh, If she saw one, she would flip her her wig, you know, so we only had dogs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I can't say that I'm terribly fond of snakes either. <laughs> I suppose that's an acquired taste if you're going to have one for a pet. So. Uh, yes, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I just don't. I wish sometimes I had a cat because I have we have to take let's put it this way take mice out of the house at least twice or three times a week because they just get in yeah I live out that in the, depends the on the cat <laughs> <laughs> I, I had mice get in the house one time before and i come in the room and the cats are all just hunkered around watching them like what is uh -huh. this toy like you guys are <laughs> terrible <laughs> i had to take care of the mouse <laughs> yeah my friend had her cat bring a mouse up and jump up on her bed and drop it right right on her lap for her oh, one time. Nice. <laughs> now, Squish, Squish, I think if he got out, he, he I mean, when he, uh, back in his day, he, he might have, you know, caught a squirrel or two. <laughs> but uh, he, yeah. he's, like you were talking about, just being able to, to bring them in and ha have them be somewhere safe, warm, dry, just... Yeah, it it, it, it makes it makes me so ridiculously happy to see this this cat sprawl out on one end of the couch. <laughs> I mean, because it's That's taken good. two and a half, almost three years for him to get to that point. 
Yeah. Oh, it was, was it a feral cat? It, was it feral? Well, no? I yeah, I call them. I call them former feral, but really they were only ever semi-feral because oh, okay. they, you know, they knew us as the feeding people, the feeding ladies, right. and uh, so so they they let us pet on them and love on them even when they were living in the ditch out by the office. So, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, no, being able to, we tried to give them, but now don't. The, I see Andrew's face. <laughs> we tried to give them houses to live in. My oh. my fairy godmother even bought one of those big igloo dog houses. Oh, we yeah. put in back behind the yeah in in the backyard behind the office with all the junk they had back there. I mean, uh-huh. and Rosemary even I swear to God she must have brought half her linen closet but to put fill it up with blankets and but they would never use the damn thing. <laughs> so. Yeah, they, they had somewhere else that they 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 right. hid and kept safe. So yeah. as long as as long as that was the case, it was fine. But it it certainly makes me much happier to see them in mm-hmm. here begging for treats the way they are. You know, it's getting big cookie yeah. time, so <laughs> they're all starting to, to uh, yeah. hover. <laughs> so yeah, so it, Sunday is Mother's Day, and it's a wonderful day to honor your mother or grandmother or whoever stepped in and was a, a female role model in your life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and all the women who have come before us, you know, Absolutely. who've paved the way, uh, yes. they're, you know, they're kind of our spiritual mothers in a way. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, what a, what a wonderful day just to honor women. It, it really oh, is. It really yeah. is. And yep. this is the year, right? I mean, look at the changes in the last, well, the yep. last, what two or three years? All the women uh-huh. in the government now. Yes, yes. Woohoo! Yeah. I mean, this is big. It yeah. is. I think we're going back to the Lemurian times or something. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be awesome. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are. Well, I had read a book a number of years ago, and it was it talked a lot about um, that women, the goddess, the the woman was the goddess, and the woman was in charge until the advent of writing. And then it became a more patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. Now, I just thought it was a fascinating read. It was a number of years ago that I read the book, but you know, it just, it just, uh, we just need to find that again. We need to, you know, not necessarily, I don't want to say crush the patriarchy, but we need to at least level up and and be some kind of balance instead of it just being one sided, so heavy handed. Absolutely. uh, you know, you I'll think settle about- for 60 40, but that's my bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Put in your order. <laughs> uh huh. Lynn, Lynn says her oldest son and wife are fosters for rescue dogs. That's so nice. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, I also admire the people that rescue the animals that have no legs, you know, no bad oh, yeah. legs. Oh, I know. oh my God, they're such fabulous. Oh, the fabulous yeah, special needs animals. Absolutely, yeah. They that's, the, you. that's the essence of being a mother, right? It's nurturing. Is that me freezing you. again. You don't have to be like I said. I don't have actual kids, but yeah. I can be a nurturing, motherly type person, and you know, help people yeah. or animals. So, uh, yeah. it, and we can all celebrate Mother's Day in, in one way or another, right? No, I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Totally. I um, I remember it when I always felt like Mother's Day made me sad because I never thought of my, I am a mother, but I always thought of my own mother. And I didn't think of, you know, I mean, it was nice and, and everything, but it always tended to make me sad because she wasn't around. And, mm. uh, you know, I had to come to terms with that, you know, that there, you know, and there are other people as well, because eventually there are people that lose everybody and they're the only ones left. And, you know, you have to find community at that point. You have to find others that can bring mm-hmm. you that. Joy. And, and that's people. kind of the position I'm in, because in many ways, I'm the last of the line of, of my family tree. Uh, you know, there, there's. Right. My, my brother even changed his last name. He was so uh, disenchanted. Oh. I suppose we'll call it with my with my father that when he got married he changed his last name. 
Wow. So I'm the only one that still has the last name, and uh, hmm. and in, in in many ways, I'm just I'm kind of the end of the line in a lot of ways. So yeah, and my children. It's an will odd be the same. feeling. It's it's a uh, yeah. it is a very odd feeling that. Now, when you're in, it ain't going any further than this. <laughs> but that's okay because we, we can make our marks in other ways. That's right. You can leave a legacy. It doesn't have to be children. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, the biggest mother of all, Mother Mother Nature, Earth. Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yes. And good. what about had Mother Mary, even? Mother Mary. Mother oh. Mary. So it's a good day to remember all those those big mothers. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hi, Johanna. Hi, Debbie. I'm Hello. glad you're here. Yeah. Hello, glad Debbie. You're Johanna. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I um, I see with people who love children and animals, Mother Mary is there. Oh, no. It's frequent. It's is it really? Universal. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether you're Jewish or Buddhist or doesn't matter. <laughs> Do you ever see Queen Yin? You know, uh, maybe once actually. Oh, oh okay. just actually this week. But um, wow. Mm -hmm. mm. But Mary is a very common. Maybe just because I know who Mary is, you know, easy to spot. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> she's <laughs> easy to spot. <laughs> she's got Jesus on her <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to see the pictures of uh, Jesus that aren't on the cross. That yeah. really bothers me to see that, him on the cross. I know that it's to, it's to show that he, you know, did sacrifice for everybody, but at the same time, it just seems like it's okay, but he got off there. You know, <laughs> we don't need to leave him there. That's, that's just the way yeah, I like that, Allie. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. but, Dolly Parton did a movie once called Straight Talk, and one of the lines in the movie was, uh, it, it popped in my head because it was one of my mother's favorite favorite movies and favorite lines in a movie. She says something, uh, she was arguing with that, she says, get down off the cross, somebody else needs the wood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my head, but... <laughs> It's just one but of that was one of she had the she had the oddest. I mean, my mother is very classical, classical music, uh, academia, all of it. But she had the weirdest sense of humor with with movies because she liked that and movies like Down Periscope. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. Oh because, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Some yeah. Some dark humor. The, the Kelsey Graham. Uh huh. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't consider that dark humor. No. I love dark humor. Ca and I don't cable consider guy. that dark humor. Just cable guys, dark humor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, that wasn't my favorite Jim Carrey movie. But <laughs> do any of you? But I saw it because it. Go ahead. Oh, I, some of you are probably too young, but I wonder if anybody remembers the child's game Mother May I. Anybody remember that one? Mother, may I? It's the game, right? Mother, may I? What yeah. cross the street or something? I forget what uh, it is. Like, like um, somebody, and I can't remember how it's played, but I remember that there's a boss, and she's the mother, and somebody says, "Take three steps forward, right. or take two right. steps back," oh, like and you say, "Mother, may I?" Kind of, but it's you have to ask mother, and <laughs> well, yeah, and she, I mean, obviously, say you're yes not playing time instead. Right, right. <laughs> Uh -huh. Jump up and down. Okay. Come yeah, on, this what Yep. Yep. Marm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, those old games when I was a kid, Simon says, we used to have button, button, who's got the button? That's how old I am. <laughs> you know, I that remember was button really games. A button Come game. On. Or drop the handkerchief. That was the other one. Kindergarten. Way back in the day. Now they have all, they're playing these games instead. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so ladies, how many of you here are either mothers, pet mothers, um, mother figures? Um, oh, yes. Yeah, seven up. I remember that. When you're bouncing the ball against. Oh, the yeah. 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 Okay. So tell us in the comments, 
give us some uh, some information about mothers mothers um what are you going to do for mother's day um grandmothers aunts uncles cat moms dog moms bird moms turtle moms (laughs) (laughs) i wonder if the ninja turtles actually had a mom (laughs) i don't know no, weren't they? Uh, I think the Ninja wow. Turtles. I mean, obviously they had a mother that laid the eggs, but I think that theirs was one of those, you know, toxic uh, accident situations. If I were, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. You know, oh, like because they were in the sewer. The... Right, because yeah. they were yeah. in the sewer. Yeah. I think it was some toxic sludge accident, if I remember correctly, but I wouldn't swear to it. My brother was the Ninja Turtle fan. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would have been your age group. My son, too. So Melinda has five sons, and she's a lab mom. I just wow. lost my lab, but labs are great dogs. Um, Johanna, how many how many kids do you have, and what are they? And Lynn has, a, you're also a pet mother, three children. Okay. Wow. Well, that's awesome. I think sometimes um, if we don't have, um, we don't realize how much a pet how important a pet is until you have one and you wonder how you ever didn't have one, you know? So, um, that's nice. One son, 46. I have been, I've had pets constantly since I was 12. So (laughs) I wouldn't know. And even before then that, that's just cats because we had dogs before that. The dog that I came home to when I was a baby was named Anastasia. She was a, she was a spitz mix, I believe is what they told me. Okay. And uh, and then we had Bandit. He was a uh, half Chihuahua and half Poodle. Mm-hmm. And the owner of the purebred Chihuahua, the purebred Schnauzer, I mean, uh, Ch- Schnauzer and Poodle. Uh, and the owner of the Schnauzer was very upset with Poodle. <laughs> I met up with Schnauzer. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be careful but, uh, with those so schnoodles. Yeah, we had a, we had a schnoodle for a while. A schnoodle, that's cool. So Debbie, mm-hmm. you're taking someone to visit. You're taking your mom to visit her cousin in Red Bank. I have a girl, my girlfriend that I um, had in college, who was my roommate, was from Red Bank, New Jersey, and I spent some time there. And we went to the um, there like a ball or something at the horse the horses. So. Um, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Melinda's busy. Melinda has five sons, 18 grandchildren, and then what? A blue healer. And am I getting this right? Did I remember that right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you are. Oh. Wow. A chinchilla. Ooh. Oh, how are my those goodness, Melinda. Uh, how are they? Oh, my goodness. Are they sort of. Like I'm a... sorry you lost your dog. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's too bad, Johanna. Mm-hmm. Well, so are you guys doing anything on Sunday, either to on like everyone? Are you honoring your mother or your grandmother or yourself or Mother Earth or something? You know, it could be. Oh, beautiful. oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. My kids, my kids, and I haven't celebrated Mother's Day all of us since 1999. Oh. So we're gonna meet up at my daughter's house. She just signed papers and bought a house yesterday and so have a cookout outside. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, you know, even if you're on your own, you can celebrate yourself in your, your feminine, divine, motherly self. Yes. That's right. That's right. I told Treat them yourself. so they went with the flowers. I said, oh, well, that's good. You know, that, that was I big surprise, you know. So, nice. Yeah. Those are gorgeous. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. You know, yeah. I am going to go to the beach um, yeah. oh. tomorrow morning. Yeah. You're going, going to, go to Galveston or where? Uh, Corpus, Corpus Christi. Oh, you're going to Corpus. Oh. Yeah. 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 So I, I, we're going to stay on the North Shore and I'm going to bring my doggie, of course, and uh-huh. uh, and my son. And uh, right. yeah. Oh, so run on the beach, right? Yeah. 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 That's nice. Oh, I've never been on the Gulf in that area. I've only been over in Biloxi and the Panhandle. Yeah, the southern part and South Padre is the best. Like um, near Laguna Madre in the south is nice. Yeah. 
All right. So Marvita is gathering with children and grandchildren. Johanna's guys will Hi, come outside. I love that. Mar 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 Hi, Mar and, and also, hi, Sheila. It's all right. I'm glad you're here now. And who else came in? Oh, Debbie, my best friends that are mother. Oh, yes. Hi, Sheila. Inquisitive Tarot. I'll have to check that out. I don't know that. I'm going to go to Martha. Oh, she's good. Potato salad. <laughs> I'll make a potato salad. My mom has placed an order. She has Pizza and beer. <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. So she doesn't want to cook. Oh, easy to please people. That's nice. Yeah. Pizza and, and beer. Your and, back. and your brother's going to? Yeah, we'll yeah. probably be there too. So we're going to garden with them around the house a bit. Oh. And then uh, have some dinner. That's <laughs> awesome. Very good. Mm -hmm. Oh. They love it too. I bet they do. I love I love a good potato salad. I have to put pickle uh pickle relish in it. Do you oh, guys yeah. do that? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't made it in so long now. Now you're gonna want to make it, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you can make it with sweet potato. Why yeah, not? More nutrition kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I bet it would be good because I'm not a big sweet potato fan, but I like the sweet potato fries. So you could probably, yeah, change it, make it that way. That's awesome. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I'm sorry, who was on Sheila and Dr. W? Oh, Whimsy. I know who who Whimsy. Were you, Kim? Were you not on me. Whimsy? No? Uh -uh. Okay. No, Sheila, uh, Inquisitive Tarot. Uh, today was oh. on a remote view with Wednesday and uh, oh, Celtic Sheila. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. She did, did very, go? very well. Did uh, she? Yeah, yeah she did very well. I know she, she's, she always seems a bit nervous, but she, she did very, very well. I was, you did good, Sheila. <laughs> I wanna, I'd like to learn how to do a remote view. I would. I think that would be cool. Well, yeah. Dr. Wimsey's got her glasses up, I believe. Oh, she does? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll ask her about it Monday when I go yeah. do my interview with her. Well, oh, you're doing an interview? Oh, nice. With Wimsey? Oh, yeah, yeah she's, I'm going to go on and uh, with Wimsey and talk about our uh, community center. Oh, wow. I assume that's what we're talking about. That's <laughs> not why else she would want to talk to me. <laughs> Well, nice. but yeah, so we, we got her we got her joined up now and she invited me to come do an interview and uh, so that's the plan for Monday. Excellent. Sheila, I'm gonna watch it later. I'm gonna look at it. You're not a deer in the headlights. Well, you know, I think it takes a, a bit of time for us to feel really comfortable even being on YouTube, really, you know, and getting the, the how to do it and all that stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll be watching. I'm going to check it out. So does anybody, you know, I thought Scott was going to be here and Nancy Jean was supposed to be here too. And, uh, I don't know where they are, I don't know. Um, but does anybody want either a, um, a like a tarot pull a question? Do you have a question or does anybody want to talk to Kim and get, you know, I don't want to put her on the spot, but you know, <laughs> I feel like you can do it, Kim. Um, you know, oh, well, uh -huh. Sheila, I don't think we ever think that we're good enough. So don't worry about it. But you're fine. You, you, this is what it takes. You have to practice. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Oh, the, oh she's yes. better than she come. thinks she is. Because she got, she got, when I, uh, she pulled on my mediation stuff, she nailed all that. Uh -huh. She nailed it. So I want you to come. She's out. better than she wants to give her credit, self credit for. Uh -huh. oh, here's book I think look, look how book bewitched has all that. Wow. 35, 33 year old, seven year old granddaughter. Oh, book! Seven I thought you were. I thought you were twenty two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A twelve year old. Oh, oh, cool. So is your is your nanny? Oh, your a companion dog. Oh, a chi palm. I love that. I love that. Awesome. So I pulled a card. I asked, does Mother Earth have a message for Mother's Day? There okay. you go. Okay. We've got spirituality. Ooh, I like that. Right? Yeah. yeah. So 
connecting. We're all connected. We're connected with Mother Earth. Absolutely. And to feel that, you know, spirituality, that bond with each other as women, you know, people, the earth. Yep. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. That's awesome. That's that was a one of the best cards you could pull. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now somebody here also said him, him please colors. I don't know what Melinda means oh. by that. Oh, to look at the colors. I don't know. Do you uh, who's know asking that for that? Oh, I understand. Melinda. Oh, you understand. Okay. Yeah, because I, I usually see colors. Okay. Um, I, I have to, let me tune into Melinda. Thank real you quick. Thank I don't have my colors, my crayons with me right now, but I can, I can look in my mind here, Melinda. Mm -hmm. Well, I see mainly, um, I mean, you guys do this too with me. I'm seeing green and gold with you, Melinda. Um, Ooh. Beautiful. And it's funny, it's almost like a if I have to say I'm getting dark in my place, but um uh -huh. it's like so like gold on like one part, uh -huh. like halfway, and then there's a green on the other kind of underneath. It's um Ooh. let me see here. The gold feels very spiritual to me. Yes. Um That's beautiful. The green feels very nature oriented. You know, the greens can mean so many different things, but this green feels very nature like you would find spirituality in nature. Awesome. I don't know if that resonates. Yeah. That's oh, T-bar colors. Is it aura type thing? Pardon? Like it's, it's aura. Yeah. Is it aura yeah. type thing? Yeah. You know, and I think it's more what I'm noticing is, uh, yes, aura, but also more like a life color. But, oh, you know, of course yeah. it can change because I've seen it change even in an hour, you know, when I'm looking at somebody Mm -hmm. You know, it can change. But, um, and then I was, oh, T Barb. Pink. I'm seeing a lot of pink around T Barb. You guys do this too. See what you guys feel for T Barb. But um, I see pink and blue. Uh -huh. And this the T Barb has so much compassion. It's like compassion to others. But I feel like, again, with this pink, every once in a while, you could be a little lacking for yourself. Um, just imagine that you could give yourself some of what you give out and then you'd probably feel more fulfilled, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, like you give away so much. And and the blue is also about um, taking care of others. Awesome. A lot of taking care of other people and also as a healer too. Uh -huh. So I was told that um, if you look at somebody like Renee has a white background behind her, Yes. If you, if you sort of make your eyes cross, if you know what I mean, uh -huh. you are able to see them as well. Is that uh -huh. That's right. For those of us who can't do it in our head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, I've been noticing that around Renee earlier today, too, because don't you guys see that around her? I mean, she has that kind of a green glow behind her. And I don't know if that's just the lighting or is this the uh, her. Oh, and there's a lot of. Huh. Let's all look at Renee. She's had an injury. <laughs> Thanks. So she's had an injury in her back. So I wonder if oh if has any you know, because that can also change the color. It now. can. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Wow. Andrea, I do see I kind of a red line there for the for you on Renee. And then maybe this is your back. I see it's like a, a like a red spike coming out. It's more on the right side of your head. I wonder about that. Okay. It would be related to huh. back. Interesting. Or my neck. Because so, I have yeah. issues with oh, my right hand because of my neck. Oh, okay. Of, uh, nerve damage. Uh huh. This is okay. fascinating. I haven't. I know, I, Ali, you said you saw colors around me. Like blue and purple or something. No. Uh huh. I've, uh -huh. Never, I've never had that before. So this yes, is Jill sees it. Uh huh. Yeah. Jill sees it too. I know I love colors. It's it's one of my favorite things. Is it? Yeah. I do. Uh, <laughs> I got right. surrender for you, Melinda. Oh. So releasing, letting go, and enjoying. Like just surrender. Uh, yeah. Oh, mm. so Love that. That feels, that feels great. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. Jill, Jill Clark wants a reading, but I don't know what. What do you want to ask Jill? Put it in the read the box if you have. If you want a card pulled or? Yeah, I see what you're saying, Jill, about the colors with Renee. I see that too. The wall is orange and she's glowing yellow. I was thinking too that Renee had some yellow around her head. Uh huh. But I oh, am right. Am I right? Who does? Andrea. Oh. <laughs> I, I see a lot of green around her. She might have yellow too, but I've oh, seen a lot of green there. Yeah. yeah, and purple. I see green and purple around Andrea. Yeah, it's so like purple in the top, like the outer. This layer. Is last day, man. I feel like I, I, I might need to do some research. This might be a rabbit hole. I'm going to figure out how to do this. <laughs> well, <laughs> colors. That's cool. I've had my aura photographed. I had it first before a meditation and what that looked like. And then I had it after the meditation and it was amazing after the meditation. Yeah. It was just, it was gorgeous. And, yeah. Uh, so it looks like Jill wants a colors reading as well. Oh, Jill. okay. Jill. Jill. Andrea spot on Melinda says <laughs> surrender, <laughs> surrender. That's a beautiful color, uh, Sheila. Bright blue. That means you're a communicator, I think. Because isn't that the throat chakra? Well, that is a throat chakra, but people with a blue, like a major blue in their field, that's more like about um, being a mom, actually. Really? Being, the, uh, being a nurturer type personality. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. And a healer, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, we know the blue. Of the throat chakra, but that's not necessarily right. is not going right. to go over the whole auric field. All over the field. Yeah. And then Jill wanted okay, and I. She was not a mom. <laughs> you don't have to be a mom to you have a nurturing personality, energy. right? Yeah. You could have that. Energy. They mm. took it. Oh. Oh. Wow. Squeaky. Yes, Welcome, Squeaky. Okay. Is it possible for a dying pet to visit in spirit form two days? Um, I will tell you this. My lab was out back barking the other day, and I saw her out of the corner of my eye. She was a black lab. And so I think um, it says two days before they pass, though. You mean to tell me, Squeaky, that... It was like a premonition that you were getting that the, the dog was going to pass or a cat or whatever it was. I'm sorry. Okay. Jill had asked, I'm sorry. Jill had asked about colors and I'm seeing a lot of green around her. It looks like a dark green. Huh? And Is that um, money? That's money. <laughs> could be either that or she's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it could. Sometimes it does mean money. Uh huh. Yeah. It, my brother had money at green all in his aura all the time, and he was rich. Uh huh. So, yeah, uh -huh. I've seen that too. But it is healing. I know that. Yeah, that's and, true. And it can be healing. Yeah, it just depends on the color of green. You have to feel into sure. it. You do. So book wants a colors reading, okay. and Gma okay. five does. All right. So we'll book do book first here, and you guys tune in with me here. I see okay. a lot of yellow with book. Ooh, oh, yellow. That. Real bright. That's a, yeah. Do you see it too? Do you feel it too? The bright with her? I do. Oh, yeah. Radiating oh. out of her chakra. Uh -huh. her a lot of yellow. Right. Yep. And it's, so to me, it's just um, besides wisdom, of course, yellow means wisdom, but this was more like almost like enlightened or something. You don't know, believe really bright spirit. Wow, that's what it feels like with her to me. Yellow is your, what do you call it? Yellow is your solar plexus chakra. So for me, sometimes that means what you, you do. You always, yeah. Yeah, what you do. That kind of, that, yeah, that kind of makes sense with the conversation I had in book not long ago that she oh. would be that sort of bright yellow color. Oh, really? Nice. So I pulled a card for Sunday, actual Mother's Day, to see what the message is and how fitting 
a time to give rather than to take. Oh, nice. Isn't that the perfect mother? It is. it is. Absolutely. So many women give rather than take. Yep. Uh, what a perfect feminine energy. But I would remind you to take on Sunday if you can. <laughs> but it's that healing, nurturing energy that that's Absolutely. Absolutely. To love on Sunday. Love. Uh -huh. And I saw for Lynn, I saw pink and purple with Lynn. She's giving <laughs> So you guys, if you want to tune in to Lynn also, to me, uh, this um, the purple is more like, a, I think, a, like a spiritual seeker. Uh, and then this yep. pink about is compassion. I feel like there's a lot of compassion for others. Hmm. I hope that makes so sense. So is, is it a dark purple? It's a dark purple. I see and that. I see the purple more on the top and the pink is more on the bottom. Cool. It's more, more like a shape like this. The purple's kind of like this, the way I'm seeing it with her. Yeah. Ooh. And of course, I love her little puppy. Uh, oh, I love <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, I ha I kind of need to go. I'm I'm have to prepare for tomorrow to travel okay. and. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So we'll stay maybe a few more minutes, and then we'll be right behind you. I, I was okay. hoping the others would come, but thank you for coming, Kim. Thank and you thank so you much. For for yeah. Yeah. Thank you and for thank joining you. our community. It's and good thank to you, finally thank meet you. you in person. Yes. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Renee, Andrea. Have fun. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah, thank okay. you now. Okay. Yep. okay. Bye -bye. Let me see if I go on this here to, to get out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. She's very lovely energy, Kim. Doesn't she? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She works with the hospice uh, and, and the dying. And uh, my goodness. And she also is a nurse. So, yeah, she does. She has a, a quiet, loving presence, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, ladies, I mean, you don't have, we can hang for a few more minutes, but uh, you're, what, you want to talk about anything before we go? Does anybody <laughs> else want to? Uh, Ask any questions. I love all the the cards you pulled, Andrea. Thank They're you. awesome. I think I just want to give a shout out to all the mothers out there. Yep. Yep. Whether you're an animal mom or a people mom. Yeah. <laughs> grandmothers, aunts. Uh, yeah, grandmothers, aunts, all of you. I want to say thank you. And I want to say thank you to those who came before us. Right. Um, and you know what a day to honor the feminine divine. <laughs> Absolutely. They said that um, the, it, it, the, the chance that you are you goes back, obviously, more than 27 generations. But all those people had to decide to get together in order for you to be made. Yeah. And, the, you know, what's the odds of that? They said that, you know, you could win the lottery faster than being who you are. And I think that, you know, we have to be happy with the fact that we were brought through by somebody, whether or not mm -hmm. it wasn't always the best or they had to leave us early or whatever it's just it's just a nice a nice tribute to people who have nurtured and taken care of us all yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome oh boy your son gave you a maid service oh my god <laughs> oh wow yeah that's awesome yeah, that's it book's been doing quite a bit here lately so the, the the yellow color made perfect sense when i when i heard yeah. it <laughs> yeah i think she gave some beautiful colors to all of you that you you know let us know and thank you every single one of you have a happy happy mother's day oh melinda wants to know uh for three-year-old grandchild that went to her mother after over three years pull the card you mean three okay she went to her to their mother, meaning that they changed hands. They from foster care or something. Is that what you mean, Melinda? Or are you talking about spirit? I don't know. I'm so happy to be with this group of women on this YouTube. Amen. You guys all mean so much to me, really. Every one of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oh, to pull a card. Happy Mother's Day, Lynn. From me to their mom. Okay. Oh, I I'm going to get your cookies in a minute. Ooh. Hot. Hot. Oh, they are often thinking of you. Oh, you're not sure you did the right thing. Oh. Well, 
Um, but I hope you keep in touch. Yeah, look at you in the heavy decision you made, but you yeah. did, you gave it a lot of thought. They understand and they think about you too. Do you, yeah, do you communicate with them? Oh, I hope so. Mm. Thanks, Sheila. T Barb, I have oh. to tell you something though. Sometimes our R's change color. So today you're a pink and blue. Oh, she won't let you. I'm sorry. Oh. You know, so it, it, will come. it will come in time. The kids can reach out to you eventually when they're old enough. Um, but someone said this and it really resonated with me. I forget who said it, so forgive me who said it. Um, Melinda, think of your daughter when she was a baby and you were holding her. And think about that love and during that time. And just feel that because that energy will go out to your daughter. She can't help it because you guys are connected, right? Um, and she will, uh, woo, I'm just feeling the wave of that happening. Really? She will feel those waves and eventually that wall will come down, It'll take a little bit of time, but don't think about the now and the tension. Remember when she was just a baby and you were holding her and all that innocence and all that love and that energy will will go to her and maybe you'll start seeing a difference. Oh, I really do think when we put energy that out that way that it definitely goes there and that that can be physically felt. It really yeah. can. Yeah. 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 And we send all that back to you Melinda. I'm sorry that she won't let you see or contact her and I hope that that changes so mm -hmm. that you can feel better. But if it doesn't please know that you can communicate with her that way, Andrea said. I really think so. And, uh, oh, okay. Oh, it's only been, I'm sorry, dear. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no wonder. That's, that's heart-wrenching. Yeah, that's, that's heart-wrenching. That's a, that's a big, we'll send you, big dramatic we'll send change. Like yeah. when our, mani our manifesting that we do will send lots of waves of love and light to you. Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very good. And thank you, Andrea, for that. Yeah. So happy, happy Mother's Day to all my wonderful ladies. And um, whether you're a cat or a, a grandmother or whatever mother <laughs> you are, you are all mean everything to me. And I send you my love and my Wishes for a wonderful day together or alone, wherever you're, wherever you're doing, wherever you are. That's right. Love. <laughs> Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.